let's get ready for some NBA basketball. UK Sports. This is Kevin Harlan with Clark Kellogg and Steve Kerr. And joining us a bit later from the sideline is Doris Burke. The fans here in Philadelphia ready to cheer on their 76ers in this interconference matchup. Let's take a look at our starters for Sacramento. Livingston is out there with J.J. Redick. Then there's Chandler Parsons. Then it's Jones. And it's Cousins in a the center, filling out the middle. And there's the three-second violation. Carter Williams with it. Over to the left wing. And it's Hibbert missing. Sean Livingston last season played really well for the Nets. He backed up Darren Williams, who was dealing with injuries, and also started for much of the year, helping keep the team afloat. He kicks it to Reddick. Six to shoot. Here's Jones. Sinks the 15-footer. Well, nice way there to get your first basket of the game. On defense, Sacramento. And Livingston at 6'7", possesses rare size for the point guard spot. He uses his length defensively. He's able to play off his man and still has the ability to challenge shots and contest shots. So he's a smart, talented basketball player. And Livingston, a reluctant long-range shooter, but aside from that, Steve, able to do a lot of things to help you win. Yeah, I love this guy. I mean, it's stat sheet stuffer. He fills up a box score in every category, the length, the versatility, uh, the unselfishness, and the defensive awareness as well. Jones, no luck. Oh, easy look there, but, you know, he misses those once in a while. Knocked away. Caldwell Pope kicks it to Bradley. Nine feet out. Right block shot. And Jones pulls it down. I'll tell you what, for what's really a, an elementary shot, he looked a little nervous on that release. Livingston kicks to Cousins. He frames the turnaround jump shot. Ah, the turnaround jumper. That was a thing of beauty. The 76ers have gone one of three from the field to start this one so far. Now here's Carter Williams. Defense right on him. And the call will be against Sean Livingston. That is his first foul of the game. Spates checked in for Green. 
and Philadelphia has possession. They trail by one. Lock at six. Carter Williams, the pass to Caldwell Pope. The 76ers again can't hit it. Not really the start they wanted. They missed three of their first four shots from the field. Livingston dishes to Parsons. He feeds it to Cousins. And the officials whistle a foul on the shot. The bucket's good. He'll go to the line. Well, great season for DeMarcus Cousins last year. And an interesting story. His owner asked his countrymen to stuff the ballot box for Cousins so that he could be in the starting five of the All-Star game. Didn't quite work out, but he still had a terrific campaign. Kicks it out to Bradley. Carter Williams with it. He's picked up by Cousins. And the shot is good. The Kings leading. Here is Livingston. Wyatt so far offensively searching for his first points of the game. And Reddick kicks to Livingston. And the Kings check on two more. And Clark, for DeMarcus Cousins, he came up short in the voting, still waiting for his first All-Star appearance after he wasn't selected as a reserve either. Well, Kevin, with the strides he made last year and the way he's found areas to improve in each summer, you have to think it won't be long, just a matter of time before he gets that All-Star. And there's the basket. Whistle blows and a chance for a three-point play. Going to the line for one. You know, the height difference there is huge, but he canceled it out with great body control in the air. Exactly, Steve. He got to the hoop and wouldn't allow himself to be manhandled by the big boy. Here is Livingston. He dishes it to Cousins. Now the pass to Reddick. And then Cousins with the dunk. None of the defenders wanted anything Clark to do with him on that jam. And I do not blame him at all, partner. He was coming in with a bunch of steam and was ready to posterize whoever decided to get in his all way. All right, I understand, fellas, but come on. You've got to challenge him a little bit at least. Kings leading out by three. Cousins with a screen for Parsons. And there's the slam dunk to finish it off. Well, that's a solidly executed pick play. I mean, it paid dividends with that nice dunk. Exactly the result they were looking for. Yeah, it worked so well. I mean, he got set, did not shuffle his feet. Really well done there offensively. Dishes to Caldwell Pope. The shot by Carter Williams. Nobody around. It's tipped. And stolen by Parsons. To Livingston. And he's going up for the alley oop. And then Cousins with the dunk. And the lead just grows on that ridiculous offensive sequence. You know, Clark, that dunk alone would have been spectacular, never mind it coming at the end of an alley oop. Yeah, that just added more to it. Yeah, what a beautiful connection on that play. Carter Williams, the pass to Caldwell Pope. Takes a shot at the elbow. Will not go. This is off the front iron. This touch has disappeared on him this quarter. He just hasn't been able to get it going. Feeds to Cousins. Shot is no good. Now the 76ers take it the other way. Clark, they've been looking out of sync offensively. You know what? A basket here would do a lot for their confidence. Here's Bradley, and he nails the jumper. So it's Sacramento now. It's a five-point game. Livingston dishes to Reddick. Kicks it to Livingston. Shot clock at six. Out of bounds, Philadelphia takes possession. That's a major mental mistake. I mean, there's no other way for me to describe it. He didn't know where he was on the court. That's a that's a that's a basic fundamental. You have to be alert to where you are. Caldwell Pope kicks to Spates. Goes to the reverse layup and drops it in. 
Now it's just a three-point Kings lead. You know, the Sixers have really undergone a complete reversal in recent years from a team with a very old-school, traditional front office to a team that's now focused on the science and analytics of winning basketball. And quite honestly, guys, we're seeing more and more teams embrace the uh, analytics side of things. Bradley kicks to Spates. Back to Bradley. And it's all evened up. Bradley's got five points so far. It's been a very efficient first quarter for him. He's creating good opportunities and converting those that he creates. And for the Sixers, their new stat-driven decision-making permeates the organization from ownership, Steve, to the front office, uh, all the way down to the coaching staff. Well, that's where the league seems to be going, Kevin. You know, teams are trying to think further ahead and see opportunities for strategic advantages. But, look, it's still a balance. You've got to have chemistry and coaching, and those numbers will come in play. But they can't be the be-all, end-all. And finish off by Parsons. Boy, the floor really opened up for him there. He sure did. A good job getting it started before the defense can get itself set. And the 76ers decide to take their first time out here. With all that Sean Livingston went through with his horrific injury a few years back. You know, Steve, it's amazing just to see him out there on the floor playing basketball. Yeah, I remember seeing that live. It was one of the most awful things to see on a basketball court. And uh, I just have so much respect for Livingston, the way he's continued to grind it out and, and carve out a career for himself. He's become a very, very good player. From deep, Morrow. Using his strength nicely there to ensure the rebound. Good work. Here is Livingston. Outside, Jones. Here's Cousins. Green with the block. Three on three. Back to Williams. The 76ers need to get off a shot. And he gets it to go. Morrow's got his first points of the game. And with Livingston, you know, he had to adjust the way he played after the injury, but was able to pick things up on the fly as he managed to be a contributor on every team that he's been on since the injury. And I think that says an awful lot about him as a, as a player and as a person. Embiid with the steal. Williams kicks to Morrow. Back to Williams. And stolen by Parsons. Reddick for three. An absolute bomb from three-point range. Well, with Livingston, as you said, he had to adjust his game a lot you know, after the injury. But he was so skilled coming into the league that he knew he'd find a way to become a positive influence on the floor. He's, he's not one-dimensional at all. He can do a lot of things out there. Middleton. Off the mark there with the three-point shot. What a start they've gotten off to on the glass. I mean, they've come out banging. And when a game starts off like this, there is, there's an intimidation factor that comes into play. Six on the shot clock. And the basket by Jones. The mid-range jumper becomes a pretty high percentage shot for him when he has that kind of space. Outside Williams. Rebound by the Kings. Jones is got four rebounds now tonight. Livingston kicks to Parsons. And two free throws coming up as he misses that one. Drawing the whistle and a lot of contact there. That one on MB. Chandler Parsons until recently had been one of the league's great bargains on his second round contract. He found a way to supplement his earnings though. He did some modeling for a designer clothing company. 
caught some locker room grief for it, but hey, <laughs> it's good work if you can get it, and I'm sure those checks kept him from being too offended by the locker room banner. <laughs> And here's Morrow outside. And it's Sacramento with the rebound. Jones has got his fifth rebound right now in the game. Screen by Cousins. Reddick with the bucket. Reddick's got eight points. That's his third make in four attempts, guys. So quick start for the game. Williams passes tomorrow. The dish now to Embiid. Passes it to Middleton. To end the run. All game long, guys, he's been getting it done. Really doing a nice job rebounding. Yeah, I can agree with you more. I mean, they've had a major advantage on the glass. Dominate. And as the first quarter wraps up, already a double-digit lead. The Kings on top. They lead by 11. And the second quarter about to get started. We'll be back in just a moment. Well, not exactly a close game so far, but as the second quarter starts here, plenty of time for a comeback. And for the Kings here, they've been really putting on the show, guys. Pretty much smooth sailing offensively. They were in a rhythm right from the beginning. Steve, they've simply made it look easy. On the court for Sacramento. Carl Landry is out there with Payne. Then there's Allen Anderson. Then there's Batum. And it's Mills in at the point. Anderson outside. He lobs up the alley pass. And Payne slams it in. Phenomenal alley-oop slam right there, guys. They're taking advantage, Clark, of a team that looks lost out there. Mm, yeah, this is threatening to get kind of ugly out here. Green. The kick out to Williams. No good with the wing jumper. And, Steve, not only is their lead big, but their advantage on the boards is huge, too. Yep, well-deserved. I mean, they have worked their tails off on the glass. And he gets it to go. And the Kings lead by 15. Had so much space there, and the defense really not showing him the respect. You can see his eyes get wide. Now let's go to Doris Burke. Doris? Well, Sixers coach Brett Brown, for 12 years, an assistant with the Spurs. Coach Popovich said he, quote, lives and breathes the game. Fellow Spurs alum, Hawks coach Mike Budenholzer said he fits Philly because he's blue collar and he's a tough dude. He's demanding, but players love and respect him. Kevin? The perfect guy to rebuild their foundation, indeed. Doris, thank you. The 76ers trail by 13. Morrow dishes to Embiid. Pass to Williams. Embiid sets the pick for Williams. Now the feed to Embiid. Green with the ball. He's picked up by Landry. And count it. The shot is good. He'll go to the free throw line. Did you see the defense get caught standing around that time, giving up an easy second chance bucket? Simply need more of an effort on the boards there, Steve. And here's Mills. He hasn't yet put up any points in this one. Anderson outside. There's the triple. Taylor with the rebound. For Philadelphia, they've gone two or four shooting the ball here in the second. Green with a screen for Williams. He kicks tomorrow. And Williams, here we go. And with that one, the lead is trimmed to single digits. Sacramento leading by eight. Only 11 road wins for the Kings last year. And with that number as your road win total, hard to play 500 basketball. Outside Batum. And Anderson kicks to Mills. Back to Anderson. Anderson can't get that one to fall. 
That 11 road wins was the second lowest total in the Western Conference last year, and Steve really sunk the King. Yeah, you know, often it seemed like the Kings' defense would let down and the other team would just get on a roll, and basically the Kings would, would fold over. It's a young team, so they've got to play with some resolve to get road wins in the NBA. Now the pass to Mills. Over to the wing. Shot to end this cold run. Anderson's shot is off. Outside, Taylor. He feeds it to Williams. So he gets the whistle. Contact on the way up and two shots coming up. That's his first personal foul. Sacramento was one of the teams in the West who really struggled against the Eastern Conference. And a lot of it had to do with their turnovers. As you said, I mean, the Kings were one of the few West teams that struggled against the East. 13 wins out of conference, which was second lowest in the West. And Mills kicks to Anderson. Sacramento again missing. He's been anything but his usual self this quarter. It's actually been ugly to see. Good ball movement here by the 76ers. Lock at six. Williams passes to Embiid. Eight feet away. And he didn't get quite enough under that one. As you mentioned, it was turnovers that really hurt the Kings against the East. You know, they did some things well and played their game for stretches, but when you turn the ball over like the Kings did, you have to play every other facet of the game perfectly to stand a chance. Here's Mills. There's the dish to Landry. And that is good. Landry's got his second bucket. Outside, Williams. This is the green. That's tipped. And that'll be Philadelphia as it goes out of bounds. 76ers retain possession. So it's Philadelphia now. They've only given up six here in this quarter. Down to five on the shot clock. Left side, Williams. And they turn over the 24-second buzzer, signaling the shot clock violation. Kings leading now by eight. Now Mills. He's had some playing time, but no scoring yet from him. Down low. It's deflected. It's stolen by Taylor. Fast break, Philadelphia. Morrow leading the charge. And breaking down some numbers here. The hustle stats for the 76ers. Boy, their frenetic defense has really been impressive. Putting a lot of pressure on ball handlers and turning them over. You know, another factor in their offense so far has been their ability to convert and score off turnovers. Anderson dishes to Mills. And the foul on Mo Williams. That's foul number two for him. Boy, that's his second foul, and he does not want to pick up number three here. That'll mess your game up for sure. And Batum kicks to Anderson. Six to shoot. Mills, that's a two-pointer. That one's rebounded by Embiid. Embiid got his third rebound tonight to the left wing. Batum against Taylor. Banked in off the glass. And now just a three-point Kings lead. Boy, they keep hammering away at him inside, forcing that ball into the paint. Smash mouth basketball. <laughs> yeah, and it's a strategy that has served them well in this opening half, Clark. Anderson can't get it to go. Tell you what, boy, it's hard to watch when the guy gets good shots and misses them. He's missed everything this quarter. Williams kicks to Morrow. He dishes it to Green. Outside, Williams. Can't tie it up as that one's no good. Sacramento leading by three. Adrian Payne, a senior forward out of Michigan State, 6'10", got a 7'4 wingspan. 
They like his combination of length and shooting range. He started playing the game late, but really developed in his time with the Spartans, his shooting stroke in particular. Williams kicks to Taylor. From deep. Sacramento grabs the miss. Defense didn't give him any space there. And the foul on Mo Williams. That's his third foul of the game. Already he's looking at his third foul. I think the coach will probably look to sit him down until the third quarter. Michael Carter Williams checked in for Williams. Outside Batum. Anderson passes to Mills. Anderson dishes to Batum. And misses it off the right side of the rim. Guys, they're looking for a way to score here. Yeah, they've had a tough time getting the lid off the basket so far. Carter Williams kicks to Taylor. Pass to Embiid. Back to Taylor. Feeds it to Embiid. And a foul called on the shot. Got him on the way up that time, so he'll shoot two right here. Well, Joel Embiid, born in Cameroon, the son of a professional handball player. He only started playing basketball at the age of 16. He's been playing soccer and volleyball, but I'll tell you, his development in the game has been rapid. Here's what Philadelphia is going with right now. Contavious Caldwell Pope comes in for Taylor. And it's Avery Bradley in for Anthony Morrow. Here's Landry. Tries to snap the cold streak. Batum with the three. Another miss by Batum. Not the best shot. Long range and with a defender right in his face. And defensively, that's the kind of work he's known for. I mean, he loves to lock you up. Carter Williams, the pass to Brantley. Carter Williams kicks to Caldwell Pope. Another miss by Philadelphia. And for Embiid, his countryman and NBA veteran Luke Richard and Bahamute spotted him at a camp in Africa. That was the start of it all. Came over to the U.S., didn't play a whole lot in high school. Expected to redshirt at Kansas, but ended up starting from day one. And the thing I liked about him was he almost improved, not just game to game. You could see improvement within game. That's with a great Embiid. point. You're right. And Mills kicks to Anderson. There's the dish to Mills. Three-pointer. Landry trying to get open. And I'll tell you what, this has been one ugly for him. And it keeps getting uglier. I mean, his touch has basically gone AWOL. Now let's send it to Doris from the sideline. Well, Kevin, the Sixers going young, and Coach Brett Brown explained their philosophy, saying, we try to highlight athletes and length. At this stage, we're trying to grow a blue-collar, hard-nosed defensive program. Take those athletes, put them in a defensive system, and get them playing in the open court. That's the flavor of what we're trying to do. Kevin, back to you. Putting those young legs to use, Doris. Thanks. Kicks to Embiid. Here's Caldwell Pope, covered by Mills. And it's going to be two free throws. Drew contact on the shot. Easy call there. No question about that one. You can hear the impact from where I am. The first one falls. The Sixers are certainly looking to build something special on the court. And to that end, they're planning to build a new 55,000 square foot practice facility close by at the Navy Yard. Spates checked in for Philadelphia. And there's the foul. It's on Nicholas Batum. That's his fourth foul of the contest. Great defense. He anticipated the play and got there first. Yeah, I think he got there in time. Nice play. Passes it to Spates. MB dishes to Caldwell Pope. Carter Williams, the pass to Spates. Maurice Spates, a big man with a nice shooting touch. Last season, an uptick in three-point attempts for him. That might be a good move, developing the shot outside the arc. The three and the way the game is played now is much more valuable than the long two-point shot. 
Boy, I tell you what, he does not look like your typical big man up there at the line. He has an excellent stroke and a percentage to match. And Mills kicks to Anderson. Pass to Mills. King's moving the ball around. Anderson's shot is off. In most spades, a backup big for Florida during their second NCAA title in 07. And he declared for the draft in 2008. He's taken 16th overall. He's been a solid rotation player throughout his career. Uh, you know, he could probably improve a little bit defensively. Uh, but uh, offensively, he's got the ability to score out there, both inside and out. <laughs> 32 seconds left to play in the first half. He's still looking for his first point of the game. He's really struggling right now. Rebounds are split just about down the middle in this game, Clark. I'd venture to guess whichever team is able to maintain that energy level on the glass will have the upper hand the rest of the way. Caldwell Pope kicks to Spates. Pocket four. The 76ers with another miss. But two dishes to paint. A tad short, but it's good off the front iron. Payne's got the game tied up here for the Kings. You know what? That's what you like to see, a perfect pass leading. It's all tied in Philadelphia. And we'll be back right after halftime for the start of the third quarter. We'll see you in a bit. The third quarter now beginning. Both sides looking to pull away in the last half of the game. You look at DeMarcus Cousins, what a contribution. That was fun watching him in the first half, just breaking out the entire arsenal of post moves. Yeah, I think he might even have a few more tricks up his sleeve, and he'll break them out as we start heading down the stretch here. Caldwell Pope out with Maurice Spates. And it's Michael Carter-Williams. Then there's Bradley. And it's Hibbert in at the five, Roman the paint. That's the group in the game for the 76ers. Livingston gigs to Parsons. And it's good assisting on the play was Livingston. And it's eight points for Chandler Parsons. This is great. Three-pointers going down quickly at both ends. Yeah, it took them no time to answer back on that possession. Foul call that time on the way up. That'll give them two chances at the free throw line here. Well, you know, it's always a challenge for a coach in a position like Brett Brown, leading the team through a season with 63 losses. How do you hold the Sixers players accountable and demand execution? And despite that lack of success, I think it goes back to his player development experience, understanding that the process is what you have to embrace as you're working towards more consistent success. Reddick passes to Parsons. Out to the right wing. Livingston. And a foul on the shot. He'll go to the strike for two. And for Brown, he knew losses would come early. But he demanded Steve a four-year guaranteed deal, wanting time to develop his team. And he got it. Well, it was smart because this is going to be a, a difficult transition for the Sixers. And, you know, with all the turnover in the NBA on the coaching front, I think it was important for ownership to give him uh, that long-term approach. Outside for Carter Williams. It's Bradley on the wing. And stolen by Reddick. Right around a minute and a half. Played here in the third quarter. And Parsons kicks to Livingston. Six to shoot. To the middle. Misses in close. The 76ers lead it. The feet to space. Now here's Carter Williams, covered by Reddick. Here's Caldwell Pope. The 76ers again can't hit it. And he continues to search for his rhythm. It's eluded him to this point. Screen by Cousins. Here's Livingston for the lead. And he was fouled on the way up. Two free throws now for him. 
Well, starting last season, just about the only thing that didn't change for the Kings was the city they play in. Sacramento fought off a strong bid from a Seattle ownership group, and instead, a new group bought the team but kept them in Sacramento. Just under two and a half minutes into the third quarter now. Now here's Carter Williams. Here's Spates. And Jones sends it back. And he recovers it. And they're able to recover. Hibbert gets the bucket. Seven lead changes now, and we're just in the third quarter. Yeah, each side having a tough time staying in front. Well, the fans love it. I mean, a, a tug of war, a uh, back and forth affair. But if you're a coach, yeah, there's a little frustration here. You're trying to pull ahead, but pretty evenly matched game. And there's the whistle on the shot. Took the foul, shot misses. He'll be shooting two. Chandler Parsons, a second round pick by the Rockets out of Florida back in 2011. Steve, what a find. Yeah, I mean, from day one, he looked ready to play at the NBA level. I mean, the speed wasn't too much for him. Uh, his skill level translated beautifully, and he's improved every season. His three-point shooting is getting better, but the ability to do so many things makes him a, a very effective player. Hibbert with a screen for Carter Williams. In the corner, Bradley with it. Hibbert dishes to Caldwell Pope. And that one's good. All well folks got five points now in the quarter. And Parson, he's 6'10", maybe 6'9". 6'10 might be a stretch, but he's a good athlete, has a tight handle. I think the more open style of play in the NBA suits his strengths as a player who likes to attack in transition and is able to get to the rim and has a really good basketball IQ, too. Plays with great confidence. He really does. Carter Williams gets to Caldwell Pope. Lots of room. It's rebounded by Livingston. Livingston's got three rebounds now in this one. He kicks it to Reddit. Off the left rim and out. And Chandler. Oh, oh, get it! Oh, oh, oh watch oh, out now! Oh, oh, oh. Now, this is why the breakaway Jeez. rim was invented for plays just like that. Well, he almost brought the whole thing down, Clark, by hanging on that long. Yeah, he did. Well, didn't he? It was a great dunk and also a great game we've got here. Livingston passes to Jones. Reddick with the three. And another three for Sacramento. A large part of what they've been able to do here is centered around his offense. Carter Williams with it. Outside Brantley. The kick out to Spates. Back to Brantley. Uncovered. And again, it's Philadelphia. Boy, such outstanding patience and decision making for them offensively. Yeah, absolutely. Their ball movement has been outstanding. They are piling up the assists. On the wing, Jones, guarded by Spates. Parsons attacking. And it's Bradley with the rebound. I like his tenacity getting to the basket there, even though the dunk rattled out. 99 times out of 100, you'll get the dunk or the foul. Now the pass to Carter Williams. Back to Bradley. Out left to the wing. Puts up a three. Second shot opportunity. And Spates gets it to go. And it's a three-point Philadelphia lead. Livingston dishes to Reddick. He feeds it to Jones. Pass to Reddick. Back to Jones. And he goes strong with the one-handed jam. There it is, guys, that Olay defense. Just watching him go, Clark, right by. I think we might be seeing which team is ready to take control of this game. Yeah, that's a dunk that could absolutely get them going. I agree, Clark. Caldwell Pope kicks to Carter Williams. 
Carter Williams with another miss. Sacramento's gone two of two from long range in the third quarter so far. Livingston gives to Parsons. Parsons right side to the inside and stolen by Hibbert. And he lines it up. He takes the alley oop pass and dunks it down. Incredible timing on the alley oop. He absolutely hammered it down. <laughs> and that's the play we're going to remember when this game is all said and done. Some nice ball movement here by the Kings. Six on the shot clock. Here's Parsons. And it's good assisting on the play with Livingston. 12 points for Chandler Parsons. And the 76ers call time here. And the 76ers with a completely new group now. Philadelphia's gone one or two from beyond the arc since coming out of the break. Right side, Williams. Green, the screen. Six to shoot. From deep, Morrow. But they'll get another chance. Williams kicks to Morrow. Back to Williams. Second chance shot. And the basket by Morrow. Morrow's got the lead up to three now for Philadelphia. One of the big stories, a second chance point. They've just been terrific here in the second half in that area. So the whistle blows on the shot and two free throws for the contact right there. Last season, the Kings inking DeMarcus Cousins to a big four-year contract extension, and he rewarded them with the best season of his young NBA career, setting career highs pretty much across the board. You know, in the past with Cousins, I think he had tended to fall in love with the perimeter jump shot. And he's got a good one. He can make it. But, you know, when you look at his size and strength, it's hard not to think that he should be taking advantage of that closer to the rim and putting more pressure on defenses as a result. I think last season he did commit to attacking inside the paint, and we saw the results. They were pretty good. The Kings trail by three. Livingston kicks to Reddick. It's a tie. That drops and it comes off the assist from Livingston. Livingston's got his fifth assist in this one. And uh, the 76ers shoot 43% from the floor. And Steve, it's pretty clear that DeMarcus Cousins has solidified his place as the Kings franchise center. Yeah, the future's bright. I mean, last season he was a contender for the most improved player in, in the All-Star game. I mean, if he can continue to produce and help the Kings become a winner, then the accolades will follow. And the 76ers with possession. Morrill kicks to Williams. Again, Williams missing. Sacramento's gotten the three ball working for them in the second half. They've hit three out of three shots from long range. Dishes it to Reddick. Back to Parsons. Fades back. And that one's good. Parsons got nine points now in just the second half. Feeds it to Morrow. Into Green. And the call will be against Sean Livingston. That's foul number two for him. Second personal foul. Third team foul. Williams kicks to Morrow. Six on the shot clock. Back to Williams. Nailed from three-point land. Williams has got seven. And Clark, a great competitive game so far. Yeah, tit for tat. I mean, back and forth, plenty of lead changes, an excellent play. These two teams, guys, look so evenly matched to me. I think this could go right down to the wire. 
figures. Cousins got him with the pump fake, but couldn't finish. Over to the wing. Here's Moro. Ties it from 19. Haywood kicks to Middleton. At the elbow, Williams. Here's Haywood. Good. And a nice assist for Williams. Their interior defense has been dismal. Yeah, and unfortunately, their offense in the paint hasn't been a whole lot better. Here's Livingston. And a great job by the D contesting that shot and forcing the miss. Williams kicks to Middleton. He dishes it to Morrow. Passes to Middleton. Blocked. The Kings have shot 9 of 11 at the free throw line. And the first one drops. You really have to like the work they put in at the free throw line here in the half. I mean, they've been really aggressive in drawing fouls, and then they've been able to knock down their free throws. I like that they haven't lost their aggressiveness here in the second half, despite trailing in this game. Well, you know, that's when you need to be most aggressive when you're down. Another good job of drawing contact and getting to the line. Now the dish to Green. Haywood, the pass tomorrow. Kicks to Williams. And they force the shot clock violation. Great D. Boy, in a close game especially, those plays really hurt. Cousins with a screen on Williams. Livingston dishes to Jones. Jacks up a three. Count that one. Jones has got nine points. You know, neither team has really been able to get the edge. Yeah, this has been a tight... On the floor for Sacramento, we've got Nazi Muhammad. Carl Andre is up there with Batum, and it's Mills, and it's Anderson in a two guard. Batum attacking. Some nice ball movement here by the Kings. And Bede with the steal. And Middleton kicks to Williams. Fires for three. Good. Williams is. Got the fourth quarter started here with a bucket for the 76ers. And look at how the hustle game has been going for the 76ers. Boy, defensively, they've played with a high energy level, guys. And all the steals we've seen, really a result of that aggressiveness. Something else they've done is force a lot of mistakes defensively. And they've been turning those turnovers into points. Right side, Williams. Pass to Morrow. The feed to Green. Just five to shoot. Williams kicks to Morrow. Second chance effort. And Embiid lays it in. And the 76ers lead by two. You've got to like what they've been doing down there in the low post, Clark. I do. I love it. Their rebounding has been outstanding. So important in a tight game. And now the 76ers on the break. Here's Williams. Out to the right wing. Out to the wing. Morrow, that's a two-pointer. And again, it's Philadelphia. Looks to me like they hit the refresh button here in the second half after shooting less than 40% from the field before the break. Yeah, well, they managed to hold down the floor defensively, and now their offense is finally starting to kick into groove. Philadelphia leading by four. Timeout called the 76ers. Been a couple of whirlwind years for Joel Embiid. Coming from Cameroon, had to learn a new culture, new cuisine, how to drive a car. 
Now he's a top pick making millions of dollars a year. That's enough to make anybody's head spin. A lot to adjust to. But with his fluidity and the natural gift he seems to have for the game, I get the feeling this young man is going to be just fine. A moment to check in with Doris Burke. Doris? Well, over that break, I listened in on Brett Brown's huddle. With his team struggling from three-point territory, he told them to start looking for more high-quality shots inside the paint. We're forcing too many threes, he said. Stop with the bombs and work it inside. And the pass to Middleton. Batum with the steal. Around three minutes gone here in the fourth quarter. The shot is off. For Philadelphia, they've gone three of four in field goal attempts since getting things started here in the fourth. Green, the pass to Williams. Out of bounds, Sacramento will take possession. Such a careless pass. You've got to keep your head in the game here. Mills dishes to Anderson. Inside. Trying to find Mills. Gets it to him. The kick out to Anderson. Anderson can't get that one to fall. And MB with a stress fracture in his back in March. A stress fracture in his foot in June. Clark, those kinds of injuries raise long-term concerns, especially when you're talking about a seven-footer with a very limited basketball resume. Well, there's no denying that, Kevin. I mean, clearly, if you're a general manager, then you're thinking about what are the prospects of this big, talented, highly gifted player going forward, and only time will tell if this is just an aberration or it's something that's going to be chronic. Outside for Batum. Stolen away. And here is Williams. He kicks to Middleton. He feeds it to Embiid. And Muhammad sends it back. And he's able to get it back. And Green gets it to go. The defense left him just a little window to get through. And he just ducked in for the layup. Terrific job. And here's Mills for three. Can't get it to go. So Philadelphia will take it the other way. Landry against Williams. And Middleton kicks to Williams. Pass to Middleton. Dishes it to Morrow. Shot clock at six. They get a hand on it. And now, here's Batum, the fast break opportunity. Oh, tried to dunk it all, but threw the foul, and he'll go to the line. They got right to the rim, but got hammered once he got there by the defense. That was a nice job taking it strong and forcing his way to the line. Well done. The story in the first half was their low free throw percentage. They've corrected that here in the second half, and hopefully they can build on it as this game continues to progress. Spates checked in for the 76ers. Caldwell Pope comes in for Chris Middleton. And the Kings will go for a different look here. DeMarcus Cousins, he's checked in for Muhammad. Terrence Jones comes in for Carl Landry. J.J. Reddick's checked in for Anderson. And it's Livingston in for Patty Mill. Here's Batum. And he gets it to go. Terrence Jones. Batum's got five points now this quarter. What's going on defensively there? A lack of focus, no concentration. Too easy. Embiid with it. Cousins is there. And the foul called on DeMarcus Cousins. And that'll be his third foul so far. Some changes for Philadelphia. Bradley comes in for Anthony Morrow. And Michael Carter-Williams subbed in for Mo Williams. Chandler Parsons, he's checked in for the Kings. Four on the clock. Here is Livingston. Carter Williams covering. Livingston passes to Batum. Deflects the pass. Parsons dishes to Livingston. Here's Jones. 
puts up the baby hook. And foul called as he misses. He'll go to the line and shoot two. That one on MB. It's been a good one for Jones. He has nine rebounds and one rejection in this game, too. And it was a good one, too. Really one of the highlights, I thought, of the game defensively. And the Kings making a change here. Redick has checked in. These youthful Sixers club really trying to play a full tilt open court style. Yeah, they want to play up tempo under head coach Brett Brown. And he said he doesn't want to control pace. He wants reckless abandon under control. He muscles it in through the contact and they call the foul. And he's on his way to the free throw line. Avery Bradley out of Texas, one of the elite perimeter defenders in the NBA. A guy who can really give you nightmares bringing the ball up the floor. 6'2", but with long arms, and he can defend both guard positions. Really pressures the ball well. Here's Livingston. Connects on the nine-footer. Now Carter Williams. Feeds it to Caldwell Pope. Back to Carter Williams. He dishes it to space. The basket good off the assist from Carter Williams. And despite his 6'2 size, it's pretty clear that offensively, Avery Brad's a point guard. He's worked hard on developing his ball handling, especially his left hand, but he's certainly at his best when he's playing off the ball. Tremendous stuff from a guy Clark we think more of for his passing. Yeah, but he's got tremendous leaping ability and a surplus supply, too. Well, that's a great aggressive move and two big points, too. Carter Williams... Kicks to Brantley. Here's Caldwell Pope. And it's Sacramento with the rebound. Cousins has got rebound number nine now. What an effort here tonight. And talk about Bradley playing the two. He's got to put weight on up over, what, I think, Steve, 200, 210 pounds, you were saying. Yeah, yeah, it looks like it. He, he looks stronger. He's, he's added some weight. Remember, he underwent surgery on both shoulders a couple of seasons ago, but now he's healthy. And uh, with that strength, with that defensive awareness, with the quickness, uh, he's got the ability to be a, a really good player. Reddick for three. Rebound by the 76ers. Pass to Caldwell Pope. The dish to Carter Williams. And he was fouled on the way up. Two free throws now for him. And he knocks down the first one. You believe the job they're doing at the foul line since halftime? I mean, they've been perfect so far. Yeah, sometimes it's contagious. Everybody starts to get comfortable and relaxed, and everything goes in the hoop. And Philadelphia making a change here. Hibbert's checked in. Here's Livingston. And so he draws the foul on the shot. A trip to the line to shoot two. You know, even from here, you could see that one pretty clearly. Yep, pretty obvious. And a good call by the official. That free throw, no good. He's only got half of the equation right, Kevin. He's getting to the free throw line often, but he's not making enough of them. Being down two points instead of one, thanks to the free throw miss, makes getting a stop here absolutely critical to the paint. Caldwell Pope kicks to Hibbert. And the Kings pushing it up now. Parsons got the ball. Now here's Carter Williams. Kicks to Caldwell Pope. Let's it go from deep. Cousins pulls it in. Cousins has got double digit rebounds now in the game. Reddick passes to Cousins. Pope loose. And that's out of bounds. Sacramento will retain possession. Here's Parsons. To tie it up. Pocket six. Jones dishes to Parsons. 
Reddick for three. The shot will not go. Bradley with some nice D. By himself. Rips down the breakaway slam. Beautiful work in the transition game. That's how to do it. Attack early before the defense can get itself set. Here's Livingston. And it's Philadelphia with the rebound. Spades has got six rebounds in the game. Carter Williams kicks to Bradley. A three ball. Shot is off. Now Sacramento takes it the other way. Very little success for him behind the arc today. Just one three-pointer in the first half and still none in the second. Parsons passes to Cousins. Spiked it away. Fast break, Philadelphia. Bradley kicks to Carter Williams. Pass to Hibbert. Back to Carter Williams. Bradley, no one around him. A three-pointer off the mark. Oh, and there's the alley-oop. And it'll be Sacramento as it goes out of bounds. The Kings retain possession. A super defensive play. I mean, if that pass gets through, it's probably two points. And he knew that. He knew if it gets through, it's a score. So that's why he sold out for it and got a hand on it. Here's Livingston. It's in! And he has brought them to within two points. And that is the shot of the game. Well, he's got the guts and courage to take it and the skill to make it. And the 76ers call time here. They're up by two. There's 21 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Williams comes in for Carter Williams. Philadelphia's gone into a funk from downtown in the fourth. Only one of their five three-pointers has found the bottom of the bucket. Two seconds separating the shot clock and game. And the foul on Avery Bradley. That is his first foul of the game. But I love it. He gets there first, absorbs the contact. Nice play defensively. Oh! Ridiculous! Tore it down that time! <laughs> That's not as easy as he made it look, guys. You've got to have some skills to pull that baby off. Well, he's got plenty of those skills <laughs> necessary, partner. Oh, uh, you know it. The guy can climb the ladder, can he? Time expires, and we're going to overtime. We've got overtime action now, folks. Clark Kellogg, Steve Kerr, Doris Burke on our sideline, and this is Kevin Hart. So Sacramento will get the first possession. And always a good ride in these post-regulation battles. This overtime now looking to be an exciting one. All fueled up and ready to go to overtime basketball here. Brought to us by Gatorade. Let's check out who's on the floor. On the court for Sacramento. They've got J.J. Redick. Terrence Jones out there with DeMarcus Cousins. Then there's Chandler Parsons. And it's Livingston in at the one. Bradley dishes to Caldwell Pope. Carter Williams, the pass to Hibbert. Knocked loose. Green kicks to Hibbert. Now the feed to Caldwell Pope. For the three. The basket good off the assist from Carter Williams. Caldwell Pope's got the first points here in the overtime period for Philadelphia. Parsons outside. Here's Cousins. And so he earns a trip to the line. Officials saw the contact, and he'll shoot two. Well, DeMarcus Cousins in this one. He's got ten rebounds and one steal. It's been a really complete performance for him today. No question, he's made an impact just about everywhere on the court. 
Both shots good from the strike. The 76ers lead it. Carter Williams with it. Laid in with a nice touch off the glass. And the 76ers lead by three. Here's Livingston. And no question, he got bumped on that shot. Definitely no room for discussion on that one. He misses the free throw. And he ends up missing both free throws. Boy, Kevin, his struggles continue. I think it's starting to get in his head now because he's normally a good free throw shooter. Carter Williams gets to call well Pope. Shot clock at six. Now the pass to Green. That misses off the backboard. They've done a great job of controlling the boards in this one, Kevin. Reddick with it. Now defended by Carter Williams. Livingston, no luck. Well, 76ers leading by three. Here's Carter Williams. He kicks it to Hibbert. Back to Carter Williams. From the high post. And Jones pulls it down. Jones has got 13 rebounds in the game. Class eating. Livingston dishes to Parsons. Blanketed by the D. He fights to the rim for the layup. 76ers have gone two of five on shot attempts since the end of regulation. Carter Williams, the pass to Caldwell Pope. Beyond the arc. Green breaking loose. That shot by Caldwell Pope, no good. And Reddick kicks to Livingston. He feeds it to Cousins. Gets the go-ahead bucket. Cousins has got four points now in the quarter. Great work inside for two vital points. That was an ideal scenario for him. Point blank range, big height advantage, and he cashed in perfectly. Here's Carter Williams. The bucket is good. He'll have a chance for one more. It's on DeMarcus Cousins. Unbelievable basket. What a huge height disadvantage. I thought for sure it would be blocked. Not this fella, Steve. Not at this stage of the game. He was going to get to the rim no matter who was standing in the way. And here's Parsons. And he takes that one up and powers it through. He hushed them up with that shot. Well, a huge bucket there to strifle the crowd. You're right. It's like they're stunned. I mean, they don't know what to think. Over to the wing. It's Hibbert with the drive. Now here's Carter Williams. Guarded close. It's good! That's how you get the crowd on its feet. Huge bucket. They've been waiting for that one, guys. Here's Livingston. It falls. This is a huge possession. You've got to execute under pressure. We're going to see what they're made of. Eight second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Here's Carter Williams. Buries it. That bucket was absolutely huge. A defensive stop can seal the deal. Livingston kicks to Cousins. Oh, off target. That's not a sight you see very often. I mean, he has a great feel for that jump shot, especially when he's open. Now a timeout called by Sacramento. They trail by one. Just four seconds left in the first overtime. Here's
Chris Parsons. Off the inbound. It's on. Well, that's an excellent challenge right there. Good job contesting that shot by the defender. So it's Philadelphia taking the W in a close one here. Clark, what a game. Yeah, they kept their cool, stayed with the game plan, and that's why they came out on top. And that'll do it for Clark Kellogg, Steve Kerr, and Doris Burke.